what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to survive to thrive well we're heading back to the truck right now we're just about there uh yeah truck's done yeah as the, the last video showed it was just a waste of time like i said i was home at least it was one of those situations where it's kind of a better safe than sorry um but uh yeah it's uh it is what it is. Like I said, the initial estimate was going to be a little over four grand, and uh, I basically just paid for labor. So um, they took it apart, ran it with the exhaust off of it, and like I said, no oil, no nothing coming through the turbo. We're going to go ahead and grab a load, though. We're going to we booked a load going down to Alabama, Coleman, Alabama, I believe it is. A uh, load of ironically oil filters here she is all pretty sitting there so we're here we're gonna throw all my stuff in the truck and we're gonna get going i'm gonna talk about uh some of these rates what's going on you know uh see what your uh, opinions are on the rates see what you guys think is going on see what your experience is on the rates where you are what part of the country you're in and tell you what my experience is and i've had kind of mixed uh experience but for the most part I feel like the rates are still there. Um, you do kind of have to fight a little bit harder for them. What I have seen, the rates are still there. Um, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more about what you can do to capitalize on the rates. You know, like for like like for example, if you're going somewhere that's 1,800 miles away, if you have a, a destination in mind that you want to get to, don't take one load straight through that 1,800 miles because it's going to pay, it's not going to pay that well. They're going to take advantage of you on that. Break it up into a couple, maybe three different loads. And yeah, it'll take more time, but you'll get a far better rate the whole way out there. You've got to think about this stuff. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and throw this stuff in the truck. And uh, yeah, we are going to uh, we are gonna go ahead and, like I said, get going. There she be. I'm going to go ahead and throw her under the trailer. Oh, yeah. All right. Woo, it's a sunny day. But it is a pretty one, so let's go. Check out that Tahoe right there, guys. That thing looks like it's brand new. You don't see those without rust anymore. We're at a place called HMS in Lawrenceburg, uh, Tennessee. I'm not sure what this guy's doing, but... Yeah, this is an Uber load and I'm picking it up going to Kansas. And uh, if you guys ever come down here to a place called HMS at uh, 2004 Remke, well, there's no signs for it. So I had to go inside and ask. And you got to go around back here. Door 61. Tahoe back there was nice. That was probably like a 97 or so. You just don't see those without rust, but I guess we are down here in Tennessee, in southern Tennessee. We're not up in uh, Ohio, so we're not quite really in the rust belt here. Pretty morning, though. Yeah, 
haven't really been vlogging a whole lot. Just kind of been dealing with a little bit of a, <clears throat> a vacuum issue. I feel like I have a vacuum leak on the truck ever since they put those turbos back on. And uh, I thought it was the boot for the CAC on the inlet side because that boot was sucking. That boot had, it didn't have the the ribbed metal rings around it and it was real flimsy and when I started it up it actually sucked it in when I was doing a pre-trip um, but going on hard pulls it was you know you could hear a real bad vacuum leak sound so I went ahead and replaced that and it helped a little bit but I'm still I'm still hearing I'm, I'm still hearing something and I can't find anything loose I can't find any obviously loose clamps around the the turbos or anything like that um, so I don't know they said that uh, if, I, if, if it's locked up I can bring it in next time I'm around there and they'll uh, they'll fix it for free if it's if it was you know something that they dealt with obviously so we'll see but I'll see, but now we're gonna go check into this place here. I've still got full boost now, though. I actually didn't have full boost until I fixed that that boot. So that boot was definitely suffocating in a little bit. They got me. Let's go check in. All right, what is your trailer number? Uh, P0640. Right there. 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 Right we actually don't have a door at the moment. So your appointment's at 9.30, so we're just gonna take your cell number. Okay. We'll send you back up, just loop around, go back up to the front, and we'll call you as soon as we have the next door. Available. Okay. So what's a number we can call you at? I'm not sure I'll be able to loop around that easily with this truck, but <laughs> look kind of tight right there. So, uh, Sorry. no, 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 that's all right, not your fault. Uh, just do the best you can, and as soon as we have a door, we will, um, call you back around, okay? Okay, appreciate it. Alright, thank you. How you doing? Alright, so I got a loop around here. I guess there's a little more room than I thought. Alright, let's see what we can do. See though, it's just not, there's not really that much room so if that white Volvo wasn't there it'd be a lot easier we could swing out a little bit more all right let's see what we can do Like I'm going to be putting my trailer tires in that mud, which isn't really the end of the world, but... Ah, uh, man, put my steers on the other side. I guess we're good with tearing up their grass if they are. here somewhere that I can pull in front of and sit. We'll see. I get a flat tire later, I'll know where. 
came from. Oh, I see the dumpster right there. Okay, look at that sky. That sky in the camera looks awesome with the clouds over there. I love it. I'll use this time to get a look at the back of the trailer too. Make sure there's nothing big in there. It needs to be thrown out. Oh, ain't bad in there. I might get up there and grab a couple things. So yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, we're here. Like I said, we're in. We are in uh, uh, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Um, going up to Topeka. I'm trying to make my way down to Texas to uh i know it seems kind of counterproductive to go from tennessee to kansas to say that i'm making my way to texas but i am um i'm just trying to find a decent rate to go into texas uh, i have to go into texas to get this trailer since the trailer is licensed uh through pdp i have to go down to texas and get the um get the texas dot done that it needs every year so i need to head down there and get that done so what I'm actually doing right now is I'm taking this load to Kansas and then I booked another load picking up right out of there going to Iowa and that delivers on Saturday morning and hopefully I can find something that picks up on Saturday going to Texas and then I could be there with it by Monday and then you know I could be in Texas maybe by Sunday and get something done at a TA or something like that to get that inspection done. So yeah, that's where we're at right now with everything. Um, but yeah, like I said, guys, I just uh, I, I started this video talking about fuel costs and talking about you know this is like several days later, a couple days later, but uh, start talking about fuel costs and things like that <clears throat> and how you can kind of mitigate what uh, how much you're spending out here. Um, and you know and and how you can get better rates and things like that, you know, and I was kind of inspired a little bit I was kind of inspired a little bit by uh, uh, One of uh, Sammy's videos by makes sense um, You know, he was talking about pretty much something similar um, But something he, he didn't touch on that. I don't think he did anyway. I'm trying to remember. I don't think he did um, But one way, you know, like he was talking about the rates and about how uh, you know He's still getting decent rates and I agree rates are still decent. I'm still I'm still well above a three dollar average, um, you know. I'll, the week I, I took a week off, obviously, while the truck was in the shop. The week before that, I averaged over five dollars a gallon. A gallon. <laughs> I averaged over five dollars a mile. Yeah, it's five dollars a gallon for fuel. Anyway, I averaged five dollars a mile. Um, I got my first load that week. I got over six dollars a mile on. The second load, I got about five twenty-five a mile. And then the third load, I got like 460, somewhere around there, you know, and that was on a 1500 mile week. You know, I only did 1500 miles, but I averaged five bucks a mile. Um, and then I took off right before fuel skyrocketed. Um, I, when I was, when I parked it, I could still get diesel for under $4 a gallon. Not anymore, not even with my discount. Uh, but the rates are still adequate you know they they still take care of it it sucks it hurts um but anyways what i was what i was going to capitalize on with what sammy said is one way to get you know like i'm going i'm bouncing all around here but you know like for example i want to get to texas right and i want to go to texas and i want to get this thing done that i got to get done I, i'm so easily distracted you you rarely get the better rates on a long distance haul, you know, like if you're going, you know, like for me, for example, to go from where I live to Texas, um, at least to the state line of Texas, it's around 800 miles, um, somewhere around there, about 800 miles, something like that, to get to the state line. You know, to get to Dallas, it's about a thousand miles. To get to the state line, it's about 850, somewhere around there. Um, so you you don't make good uh good uh dollars per mile if you take a load straight from where i live to texas 
um, you know, it's, it's harder to, to do that to get it. You know, I, I, I mean, I've gotten over three dollars a mile doing that, and I still try, um, but they're a little bit harder to come up on. Um, they're the, the the brokers are a little bit more, um, a little bit more firm on their rate that they want to push the load for when it's going that far. So if you see a load for like two dollars and sixty cents a mile going from like Ohio to Texas. They might only come up to like 280 a mile. You know, they're not, they're not budging much on on the long runs. Um, some of them are, but you know, I should say from Ohio to Texas because every lane's different, every market is different. Um, now, cut now right now coming from the south up to the north, phenomenal rates. Um, you know, that's kind of where the where the market is right now. Picking up a load in Ohio to Texas, you are very lucky if you get three dollars a mile right now. Um, but the way that you can still get to Texas on maybe even $4 a mile is book a couple of loads. Don't just book one load straight to Texas. Book a load that picks up, you know, you know, in Ohio or somewhere and take it to Tennessee, you know, or take it to Alabama like I did. Um, something, something like that. I, I booked a load, went to Alabama for uh, about, it was four sixty eight a mile is what I got on it. So... You know, booked a load, you know, and that was about, that was on like 450 miles, I think. The total was, the total thing, the, the, the total rate was like 1850 bucks. I got it for, for 450 miles. So I took that load down to Alabama and, uh, you know, now I'm just kind of bouncing around doing sh not really short runs, but shorter. Um, like I think the one I'm doing right now is about 600 miles. Um, and I got it for uh, it's, I got it for just above three, on my lower end, three dollars and thirteen cents a mile, um, going up to Kansas, and then I've got another load booked going up to, or going to Iowa, that's paying me fourteen hundred on three hundred miles, and then I'm hoping to get a load from there to Texas. If you book a couple of loads to get you to that that, that destination that you have in mind then you can usually get a better overall rate, you know? Like I said, you can usually make that $3.50, $4 a mile rate if you are willing to do a couple of different loads. It'll take a little longer because, you know, you're gonna you're going to spend more time at a dock because you're going to, you know, you're at more docks. But I guess really the question is, what's more valuable to you? Um, you know, a lesser rate to get to Texas, but you get there sooner and then you're out sooner? Or a better rate, but you take your time to get down there. It's kind of a, it's kind of a subjective opinion um, on what you want to do. It's a, it's your, it's your choice. But that's a way. If the rate per mile is your biggest concern, which right now it really kind of should be. If the rate per mile is your biggest concern, then absolutely two, maybe three loads to get to Texas. You know, three or four hundred miles each load four bucks a mile on each load, somewhere around there. You can do it. You can. Uh, you've, Like I said, you've just kind of got to look around and you've got to just be patient with the loads. I was getting a little, you know, I won't lie, I was getting a little bit frustrated when I was, um, when I was booking loads from the house. I feel like drivers right now are vultures. Like I was, I mean, just holy cow, man. Um, I was, you know, book, I, I, I go to book a load and somebody would undercut me by $500 on a bid. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you do that? I've seen, I understand that it might be because they feel like, <coughs> holy cow, I got something on my throat. Woo, what the hell was that? Darn, something got right in my throat. <clears throat> anyway, um, I understand that you feel like if you bid lower, you're more likely to get the load. I get that. You're, you're desperate for the load. But I've seen these loads going for what I'm bidding them for. I'm not shooting, I'm not shooting from the hip when I bid on these loads. I have seen these loads go for what I bid for them, or what I put the bid on, or at least in the ballpark. So when I see, so, so when, when I put like a $3,000 bid on a, on a, you know, 800 mile run, <coughs> I think I'm dying. Somebody call 911. Call Oprah. Call Tom Cruise. Holy cow. <clears throat> what in the world?
I think that's God's way of telling me to shut up. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, so yeah, they, I bid a load for like, you know, three grand on an 800, on like 800 miles or so. Because I've seen it go for that, you know, and that's even less than I've seen it go for sometimes. I've, you know, I've done the exact load for like 3,200 and I've bidden three. And then somebody comes in and undercuts me by over $500 just with the, just with the press of a thumb. And I'm thinking to myself, all that money that you potentially left on the table. Why do you do that? Why? And so they automat they automatically go from it being like a, you know, a potential three dollar and fifty cent a mile load down to being like a three dollar a mile load. You know, or sometimes they'll even undercut more than that. You know, they'll, they'll drop it down by eight hundred bucks, and I'm just thinking, and it, it, it's frustrating. Not so much for me personally, but it's frustrating because you're watching these people destroy the industry. You're watching these people destroy the rates because they're just they're they're, they're just putting bids in that are astronomically lower than they should be, in my opinion. And it's it, it's really frustrating, and it's like why you know so many people, <clears throat> so many people leave money on the table, and they don't realize it. You know, I did. I there there's a load I did. Uh, and, and and I get that you know, theoretically the rates change through the week, but I did a load going from. <clears throat> this might be the receiver or the shipper. Hello. Hey, this is Grayson with Livingstone. Um, our first door back here, 61, is ready. If you'll back into it. Alrighty, I'll be right around. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, we're gonna go back into a door. But yeah, so anyways, guys, it's just it's one of those things. You know, like I picked up that load for 2,800, or I picked up a load for 2,800 bucks once in New York, and. Uh, you know, took it down to Kentucky, you know, 600 miles. And, uh, I was up in that same area the next week and I put a similar bid on the same load and somebody undercut it by a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. When I just did that load for $2,800 the week before and somebody just, bid, they, they didn't even try to bid high. They just bid for eighteen hundred bucks, and it's like you just potentially left a thousand dollars on the table. I don't know. I I just don't get those big drops. I really don't. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna go get into the store into the store sixty one. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, here comes the ball though that was in that door. Well, that was fast. That guy was backing into that door as I was walking in to check in. Damn, that's really fast. All right, let's go do it. <laughs> Doors are open.
boot I was talking about. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of the old boot. That boot right there, though, is 70 bucks. And then each one of these new clamps were 30 bucks each. So between the boot and these two clamps, you're talking 130 bucks and that's me doing it myself for a piece of rubber and a couple little clamps truck stop that I this field uh, stop is at so if it's looking too crowded I probably won't even go there. If I go to the Petro about 20 miles further I'll, I can get it for close to the same. The Petro just passed it is like 404 so about six cents more but uh, sometimes that's worth the aggravation or worth not having the aggravation. Let's see.
like I should be able to get in there. $389 for uh, gasoline and $445 for diesel. And with my discount, like I said, it's $398. So I don't know if you can hear me or not over the fan. But yeah, $398 for me. So why not? not usually an advocate for stopping in, in downtown areas like this, but the things you'll do for fuel <laughs> when it's cheap, er, anyway, it's so, so sad that I think that $3.98 for diesel is cheap now, like dirt cheap now. Might even be worth filling her up. <laughs> oh, what are you doing, Joker? It's not even a lane, you stupid escape. It even says no. I love it. I love it here. I love cities. People not minding what the signs say, turning right on red when they're not supposed to from a non designated lane to begin with. I love it here. It is great. Yay! Entrance here, huh? Phone might fall off. Oh man. <laughs> Did my refrigerator come open? Oh. Energy Express. Hey, look at that hole over there. Hole. Lord, did you swallow this truck hole? All right, let me see. Ow. Okay, stop spinning tires. Well, I don't need death. <laughs> I love not having to get death. All right, let's go get some fuel. We got the nozzles in the tanks, and you know what? I'm gonna splurge. I'm gonna fill them up. That's right. I'm Mr. Big Shot. I'm gonna fill up my tanks. Here we go. We're filling them both up, boys. We ain't playing around today. All right. Uh, we're gonna check my uh, CAC boot, see how that's doing. Oh, yeah, she's still on there. Cool. I should, I should replace all these boots, honestly. Up to 170 gallons. I'm gonna guess that she's probably gonna take about 210. That's kind of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm bet, betting on. About 210 will probably fill her up. 205, 210, somewhere in that ballpark. No, she's done.
Took a little less than I expected, about 203. My apologies, 202. Always want to shake it off. Always want to shake the tip. Just to make sure you get all those drops. All right, where is it good and secured? I'm going to go get my seat and get out of here. Something else I'm going to do I forgot about is I'm going to capitalize on every drop of fuel I got and use some of that hot shot secret right here. resting on the other side. Alright, that should be good. Let me go throw this bottle out and we'll hit the road. Alright, let's get the you know what out of here. I'm making it about halfway through the state in Missouri. Like I said, I'm going to Topeka to a Target for 4 p.m. tomorrow. So I just kind of want to get through halfway through Missouri tonight. And my goal is to find a small, quiet truck stop to call home for the night where I can go for a little walk without feeling like I'm getting chased down by trucks. Right now we're still going to get through here. Petro at this exit, I'll probably 
park there for the night. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm hoping this truck wash isn't busy. Man, yeah, back here not too far, when I was pulling step deck, there was a, a roofing place I picked a load of shingles up at once and I forgot it was there. Going right by and it reminded me when I was pulling step deck. unworthy. stupid car oh my gosh there's an ambulance right here and these people are just going right through the light uh, we just don't collectively we don't have common sense anymore we really don't large cars in there right now. Sweet. I'm gonna see if they can't wash the side of the block too between the turbo and well right on the other side of the turbo on the block. <clears throat> and maybe I can hopefully see where this little oil leak is coming from.
see what this how they do here. Looks like they use all hand washing here. <clears throat> I'm in Kingdom City right now. Kingdom City, Missouri. It's a little dark out here, but we'll see how it looks. Like we'll have to get a better shot in the daylight in the morning but uh yeah she is clean now uh, i had them wash the side of the block too on the pass on the hot side so i can maybe see so i can maybe see uh you know where that oil is coming from but yeah anyway we're done for the night i am gonna go ahead and just call her quits for the night and uh yeah, we'll uh, catch this back up tomorrow. So anyways, guys, y'all have a good one out there. Be safe. Uh, survive to thrive. And uh, yeah, if you're running through Missouri right now, I think I think Missouri has the best fuel prices at the moment. From what I've heard and seen, uh, they are, like I said, they're, it's like 445 at the smaller truck stops for diesel. Um, and I got it for 398 with my discount so can't really complain too much uh, but you'll have it going out there again like i said be safe and we will talk to you guys tomorrow